Okay, welcome for, we're glad you're tuning in. We have our second to last classwork of the school year, uh, 11.4, page 776, 3 through 21 odd. I picked out four problems, 7, 11, 19, and 21, uh, to demonstrate, uh, because, uh, frankly, because uh, two of them involve fractions, uh, one of them involves finding four different answers, and another one involves uh, a square. So I thought these were kind of maybe the trickiest math ones um, that I could cover along with just showing you the, the basic uh, skills uh, to solve each type of problem. So let's jump right in. Uh, number seven, find the value of x. So you have to look at it and think, okay, what have they shown us in the, in the four key questions for this lesson that would allow me to know what 4x over 5 is equal to? Well, whenever you see this right here, that they've, they, they've got a line, a, a diameter going through the middle, they're telling you, well, that means it intercepts half of the circle. So this is a semicircle. So that means you know what E equals. If this is half of a circle, which is 180 degrees, then I know that angle E, I'll go switch to red here, I know that angle E equals 90 degrees. Okay, so by knowing that that equals 90, that allows me to write something so I can solve for X. That means 4X over 5 equals 90. Now we can just uh, do our reverse our algebra and f find out for x. Instead of dividing by 5, think of, that, think of that as 4x divided by 5. I can multiply both sides by 5. So that means 4x equals 450. Then I can divide by 4. And that tells me that x is equal to... 112.5. And that is, that's all they asked for. They said, what is X? So I found X. X is equal to 112.5. And again, I knew that because I, had, I could deduce that whenever you see it going through the middle, that's that semicircle. This is, this is 180. So the inscribed angle E must be equal to 90. And then it's just algebra from there on out. Okay, number 11. Uh, you've got a quadrilateral, and number 11 is saying I need to find angles A, B, C, and D. So I got four answers. I'm going to find all three, all four angles. We did one like this, just on, just like this on the homework. Um, so what did we learn? Well, we learned that opposite inscribed angles, because together angle C covers this half of the circle, and angle A covers this half of the circle. Together, they've got all 360 degrees covered. So added together. Um, and since they're half of that, that means together these two opposite angles of a quadrilateral must equal 180 degrees. So I can simply write that equation, and from here on out it's algebra. 4z minus 10 plus 10 plus 5z equals 180. Again, notice I didn't use uh, uh, angle B because I didn't know its opposite angle. We'll be using that once we know z, we can plug it in there and we'll find uh, angle B but I'm not using it in this equation because it's just the opposite uh, angles that I'm concerned with. Okay, let's just keep going. Let's see, check our 4z minus 10 equals 10 plus 5z. So it looks like my 10s are going to cancel out and I'm going to be left with 9z, because i got like terms here, 4z plus 5z. 9z equals 180. All right, then we go ahead and divide by 2. I'm sorry, divide by 9. I'm already solving maybe in my head. Cancels out, so z is equal to 20. And from there on out, I can go ahead and start to solve for my various angles. Uh, let's see, 20 plugged into angle A is 20 times 4 is 80. 80 minus, uh, let's make sure I do that right. I write these. Let's check. Oh, let's see. I, oh, no. I'm looking at the wrong problem. That's why. I'm like, wait, am I doing this correct or not? Number 11. Yes, there we go. 20 times 4 is 80. 80 minus 10 is 70 degrees. So I know that angle A is 70. Uh, once you know one angle, you can quickly supplementary find this one. I can plug the 20 in here, and I can do that. Or I can subtract 70 from 180. So I can quickly see angle C must be 110. Double check, 20 times 5 is 100, 100 plus 10, 110. So it works. 
Those two angles, again, should always add up to 180. That's what allowed me to solve this. Then we can find angle B, uh, plugging in our 20 there. 6 times 20 is 120. Uh, minus 5 is 115. So that means we got 115 here. There's my 110. So 115 degrees. And then angle D is supplementary to that. So I can either, I, I, and since I don't have an expression here, I have to just say, so 180 minus 115 is angle D. And so that's going to be uh, 65 degrees. So there we go. Again, all start from when you see a quadrilateral, okay, opposite angles have to add up to 180. Usually that'll involve then I'm going to solve for my variable. And then that once I know that variable, I'm free to find all my various angles. Okay, not too bad. Again, mostly a lot of algebra uh, in this lesson, which again is good. Uh, we need to practice that because algebra 2 is coming. Okay, number 19. Uh, we're finding arc AB. So I need to know arc AB. Well, I can see that arc AB is intercepted or is being intercepted by angle C. So 10x is equal to AB. But I can also see that AB is also equal to angle D because these uh, D and C are intercepting the same arc. And so that means what do we know about D and C? They are intercepting the same arc. These must be the same. That, that's key because then that means, oh, I can write an equation. I'm going to do it down here. Uh, 2x squared equals 10x. Okay, and now I, one reason I wanted to do this is to remind some of you how you can solve for uh, uh, when you have these, when you have uh, x squared. It's a little tricky to solve this one. So what I would do is subtract uh, 10x to both sides. Okay, now these are like terms. Do not actually subtract them. They'll just be written as a polynomial. 2x squared minus 10x equals, that canceled out, so it's actually equal to 0. And so now, uh, how do I solve uh, a, a, a polynomial like this? Well, this is going to be your Algebra 1 review for the day, at least more in depth, is we're going to factor. We need to pull out whatever comes out of both of these terms. I can take out a 2 from each term because I have 2 and 10, and I, I'm going to pull out an x because I have that in both. So I can pull out 2x, and then what's left is 1x here minus 5 equals 0. Okay, And so I can see that this is, uh, I factor this right because if I multiplied 2x back in, I'd get 2x squared minus 10x. Now the value of this is because, now look at this equation. Something times, uh, something times x, uh, I'm sorry, something minus uh, 5 equals 0. And so I can see from this that x is equal to 5. Because if I plug a 5 in here, I get 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 times 10 is 0. So 5 is a solution uh, to this problem. Okay? And so now, once I have found x, I can just plug that back in and, let's see, right, I can now, I can, once I know x, I can now plug that back in right here, okay? So 5 times 10 is 50, so angle C is 50 degrees. I can see it should be the same up here. 5 times 5 is 25, 25 times 2, ah, that's also 50. Good, they are equal to each other, so I know that is a solution. Alrighty, now, uh, don't put 50, and if this is a quiz, don't click 50 as your answer, they'll have trapped you. Um, you'll wish you showed your work, so you at least get partial credit. We wanted arc AB. So remember, how does AB compare to the inscribed angle? It's twice as big. So, arc AB is equal to 100 degrees equal to 100 degrees, twice that of the inscribed angle that we found. Um, so again, lots and lots of practice. Just practice these so that you can learn to avoid uh, some of the potential pitfalls. All right, and the last one we're going to demonstrate, number 21. Primarily, it's very similar to number 11, but just wanted to work through the fractions with you um, in case that was a stumbling block. Again, kind of honing up some of our algebra skills here. So uh, we have a quadrilateral. What did we learn? 
opposite, it's exactly the same. Opposite angles are supplementary, so then I don't know E and C, so I'm gonna go with uh, D and B. Plus, uh, for number 21, uh, we are supposed to find all four angles, okay? So we'll get the plug stuff back in. So, here's our equation, and this is why it might be a little scary for some people. Z over two plus Z over four plus 30, those are the two angles, equals 180. Now let me just show you, because the other reason I want to do this is remind you how easy it is to deal with fractions. Don't have to be scared of them. Uh, the first thing I would do is I have this plus 30, I would clear that out. So I can subtract 30 on both sides and make this a little cleaner and a little simpler. So now I'm just left with uh, Z, oops, let's, go, let's use black. Z over two plus Z over four equals 150, all right? Now this is where I'll just show you the, the trick that I find very useful, and that is uh, multiply. If I multiply everything by something that will cancel both of these fractions, then I can clear this away. Now there's more than one way to solve this problem, getting rid of these fractions, but this is a, just a technique I wanna demonstrate. In other words, what can I multiply these by so that I can cancel out a two, but also a four? If I multiply just by two, the twos will cancel, but I won't fully destroy this denominator. It won't cancel out. I'll still be left with a two on the bottom. So four is what I want to multiply everything by. If I multiply everything by four, then watch what happens. I can cancel, I can reduce, cancel the two there, and this becomes a two up here. So two times z is two z. Here, four and four completely cancel. So I'm just left with one times z, so 2z plus z equals, and then 150. 150 times four is going to be 600, uh, because, well, you can calculate that, but we have 600. All right, and so notice, no more fractions. Fractions are gone, and this is pretty simple from here on out. Um, and again, what we did is we multiplied everything, even the answer over here, multiplied everything by a number that would allow us to cancel out the denominator. Didn't, it didn't completely cancel out the numerator on the first, so that's why we got the two times the z. The four and the four completely reduced, so there was only z. And 150 had no denominator to reduce by, so it got the full four times 150. So now we combine like terms. Three z equals 600, divide by two, or I'm sorry, three. And we are left with z, equals 200. Alrighty, so 200. I'm gonna underline that so we can see it better. Z equals 200. So now it's just a matter of let's plug it in. Uh, 200 divided by two. 200 divided by two is Z over two, so that means that angle B must be uh, 100. And that means if B is supplementary to D, I don't even have to plug in 200 here, though you can, but I can see that that is going to be, angle D is going to be 80. Double check if you want. 200 divided by four is uh, 50. 50 plus 30 is 80, it works. Uh, plug in 200 into Z. So that means Z. Uh, so 200 minus 59, that's going to be 141. And then I can then supplementary figure out that C is supplementary to E. So 180 minus 141, and that's going to be 39. So C, put it over here, C is 39 degrees. So again, once I know the variable, I can plug it in and I can solve uh, for each angle. And again, it starts out just from the simple thing of these are supplementary. This one has the added algebraic twist of dealing with the fractions. So there you have it, a couple sample problems that again, I think the four most difficult, but that might be relative. Uh, reach out, I'm happy to help you. We are almost there. We have one final test on chapter, that's only the sections we're covering. Uh, we'll cut one more set of videos, 11.5, and then we'll have our chapter 11 test on Friday, May 29th, and you will uh, be finished for the school year. So uh, don't give up, don't be apathetic about this end, finish strong and reach out and ask for help because I'm, I'm, I'm dying to help and cl help clarify things in any way I can. All right, good job.